Welcome back. Now, this is going to be a bit of an odd video. In this video, we're going to talk about, like, qualitative behaviors or different ways you can think about this complex exponential function and its relationship with cosine and sine. So let's start off by just looking at this function, e to the i omega. We know that this will describe a point in the complex plane. It'll have, the point will have a magnitude of 1, and a uh, phase of, of theta. So that means since it has magnitude of 1, it's going to be on the unit circle on, of the complex plane. And if, like, let's just say this is angle theta, then the point will be right here. Now let's imagine what happens if theta is a function of time. Let's say that theta is equal to omega t which means that instead of having e raised to the i times theta, we have e raised to the i omega t. Now let's think about what this actually means. Let's start off at time t equals zero. At when t is equal to zero, then theta is going to be equal to zero, and we start off at this point right here. Now as time increases, the value of theta increases. So eventually we may get to this point right here, and then later maybe this point right here, and then maybe this point right here. And as time goes on, we progress around this unit circle. So we can think of this complex exponential function as a function that rotates or moves in a circular motion in the complex plane. And that's really important to realize because we never really think about like the exponential function like that when we're working in the real domain. In the real domain, if this had a real exponent, like e to the x, then it, has, then it doesn't look anything like that. It's just something that goes up exponentially. But when the exponent is purely imaginary, then it describes a circular motion in this complex plane. So e raised to the i omega t, we can say that that moves us counterclockwise. We're going to say cc for counterclockwise. And it moves us with a frequency, uh, with an angular frequency omega. Now we can even think about the case where we have e to the negative i omega. Sorry, e to the negative i theta, which is equal to e to the negative i omega t. This time, as time increases, theta becomes more and more negative. So we actually go down and we go around this unit circle clockwise. So e to the negative i omega t, that means going clockwise around this complex plane. Or you could think of it as rotating with a negative frequency, a negative frequency of negative omega. Now when we think of like this ex complex exponential is rotating around the complex plane, then what's cosine and sine then? In that case, cosine is just the real component. Uh, cosine omega t is the projection of the circular motion along the real axis. So we can say that is the real component of e to the i omega t. Likewise, sine omega t that describes the projection of like the circular motion onto the imaginary axis. Sine omega t is equal to the imaginary part of e to the i omega t. And this is fairly obvious because we know cosine is the real part and sine is the imaginary part just from Euler's formula. But it's important to think of it in terms of like this exponential function as like a rotation. Now I want to talk about like this relationship between the sinusoids and the complex exponential a little, a little bit further. And in order to do that, we're going to have to derive out a couple other equations. Or not so much derive, but just use algebra to like find some new equations, I guess. So let's start off by rewriting Euler's formula. e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i times sine of theta. And let's also take a look at what happens when we have e to the i of negative theta. That's going to be equal to cosine of negative theta plus i times sine of 
negative theta. Now, e, uh, this part here, that's just e to the negative i times theta, and that's equal to cosine's an even function, so cosine of negative theta is just cosine of theta. And sine is an odd function, so sine of negative theta is negative i times sine theta. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and use these two equations, this one right here and this one right here, to try and isolate like a uh, the cosine terms and the sine terms, and we're going to rewrite them in terms of these two exponential functions. So I'm just going to label this equation equation 1, and this equation equation 2. And let's start off by trying to isolate the cosine terms. So let's add equation 1 and equation 2 together. If we do that, then if we add the left-hand sides together, we get e to the i theta, plus e to the negative i theta. And if we add the right-hand sides together, we get cosine theta plus i sine theta plus cosine theta minus i sine theta, which is just 2 times cosine theta. Now we can simplify this by dividing by theta, and we get that cosine of theta is equal d to the i times theta plus e to the negative i theta all over 2. We can use a similar approach to try and isolate sine theta, and the way we can do that is we can subtract equation 2 from equation 1, or just 1 minus 2. If we do that, then if we subtract the left-hand sides, we get e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta, and that is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta minus cosine theta minus a negative i sine theta, which is just plus positive i sine theta, and we get, on the right-hand side, we're just left with 2i sine theta. And now we can divide by 2i, and we get that sine of theta is equal to e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta all over 2i. So there we have it. We have two handy formulas that relate sine and cosine in terms of these complex exponentials. Now you may be thinking, okay, now that's pretty neat, but what's exactly the motivation for that? Why do we need to think of like cosine and sine in terms of something that we're not really too familiar with? And that's going to be our motivation for the next video. This is going to be like a bit of an odd discussion, talking about e, uh, this exponential function as the most elementary or simple function. But we'll get to that in the next video, so I'll hopefully see you soon.